This video today is all about at-home soil test kits. It's a request from a collection of my, of my viewers of the channel, particularly Tom in Ottawa. And today I'll be showing you the Rappi Test Home Soil Test Kit. This particular variety comes with 40 different tests. That is to say, there are four tests that can be ran from this kit, and each one you can do 10 times. So why would you do a soil test to start with? Well, simple things like seeing some yellowing of your, of your grass blades, could be a sign of low nitrogen. You could have grass that starts to grow and then stunts, it could be low, low phosphorus. Maybe you're, it's coming into disease, you're finding the overall health of your lawn isn't good, and that could be a sign of low, of low potassium. So a soil test, can help you determine if you're deficient in any of those areas or if you have an abundance in those areas, which also includes your pH, your acidic level. So this test comes with an acidic level, your pH test, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Each one of these comes with 10 caplets for the 10 tests, and they go into the little container itself. In addition, you have a little eyedropper that you can use to fill your, fill the liquid portion of the test. We'll get to that in a few minutes. So a test can be done annually, but as a minimum every two years. Anytime you notice damage, potential damage on your property, your grass struggling, you can do a soil test to see if there's something else going on other than what you can see visually. When we're talking about fertilizer and we're talking about nutrients in the soil, the N, the P, and the K, some folks, what does it even mean? I'll give you a very simple way of understanding it. Think up, down, and all around. Nitrogen grows the plant up. Phosphorus allows the roots to grow down Potassium is for the overall health of the plant. With that said, you're going to need some soil samples. And you're going to need samples from at least three inches deep. I generally go down to about five inches. And I'll show you what to do with it once you've done that. So I've got my Lancy soil probe here. Go down. And we'll take that as sample one. Here's my second location, down here. There we go. Now with my soil samples collected, I'm gonna do my first test. And the first test that I'll do is for pH. You see on here, the little line, this is where you fill this particular container with soil. So you fill that with soil, you break your soil up, drop it in there. Once you have that filled, you fill it to the next line with water, preferably distilled water. If you don't have distilled water, regular tap water will do. Pop the top off, break up the soil. I'll drop it down a little bit at a time. Just gonna remove a capsule from here. Green goes with green. Also purple with purple, blue with blue, orange with orange. Now you can separate this or you can cut it. I tend to cut them. I have a little more control when I do. Pour that in, all the contents of it in there. Once you've done that, you take your eyedropper and you want to fill that, as I said, to the fill line. Now with that filled, you put the cap back on, make sure it's on snug, and then you shake that to break up the soil that's there. So now, after a couple minutes, you can see the soil has settled down at the bottom. You can have a look at the color of the, of the liquid of the water with the solution. It's not quite here and it's not quite there. 
So we're kind of at the high end of this, probably right around neutral. If I let that sit a little while longer, that will clarify a little more. There we are, there's a look again. And as you can see, we seem to be sitting right between these two lines. So to fix it, I'll be adding some aluminum sulfite and that will be for a different video. So now I'm gonna test my nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. To do that, I'm gonna take the soil that I've collected, break that up. Again, making sure that I don't have any rocks, roots in here. The recommendation in the instructions are to have one part soil and then five parts water. You have a Starbucks around, maybe you can grab one of these little cups. I find they come in, they come in handy. I've marked out my two ounce and I've marked out the additional 10 ounces. So with that filled to the fill line, I do this strictly for convenience, makes it easier to do things. I have my water. Again, it recommends distilled water. If you do not have distilled water, then regular tap water will do. I'll fill that up to my fill line. Cap it. And then shake it to make sure it's all mixed. I do not recommend doing this while wearing a white shirt. I am a professional. With that all mixed, it's recommended that you wait for the soil to settle on the bottom and for that water to clarify as well. Now with the magic of video, actually just a little pre-planning, I have my soil and water mixture ready to go. I did this up several hours ago before I started the video. What you do is you take the top off each of the containers, comparators, I suppose. Take your eyedropper, you fill the chamber. You fill the second chamber so that when you're comparing, you're comparing using the same colored water. And then take a capsule, making sure purple is with purple. You put the powder in after, because just in case you overfill, you can take some of that water out and shake. And we'll let that sit. Now, while I'm letting that sit, I'll move on to my next. It's the exact same process. Put that in the small chamber. You'd let these sit for up to 10 minutes. That one a shake. So here's a look at the nitrogen test. You can see that it's sitting around deficient, possibly as low as depleted. Phosphorus, again, deficient, possibly depleted. And then my potassium. And potassium, again, it's sitting at right around deficient not quite depleted, but it's in that same area. Now these results are not a surprise to me. I had done a lab test at the end of the season, last season, and my numbers were looking right around where they are with, with this test. So with that said, do I find the test to be effective? I, I most certainly do. It's some way that I can test the soil on the spot within a, within a short period of time, as I said, 
you do need to wait for the water to clarify before before using it and if we're talking about uh, a clay soil that can take up to 24 hours sand soil could maybe two or three hours at the most so it's pretty quick I don't have to send it in to, to a lab wait for the results to come back I can do it on the spot and if I notice some areas where I have some significant concerns I'll take a soil sample and I'll send it into a lab to have it done as well. Overall, I'm pleased with the results. I would use it again and I do use it. I've used a RAPI test on site with some of my clients in the past. If you have any questions about this product, please put them in the comments section below. If you have any comments, put them in the comments section below. You can share this video if you'd like. I'd appreciate it if you'd subscribe to the channel. Also, if there's a video that you would like to see, that hasn't been covered by my channel thus far, leave that in the comments section. I'd be happy to respond and potentially make a video specifically for you. I'm Jeff Seaton, and this has been Jeff Seaton Lawn Care.